Up From Work podcast. My name is Dave Swillam. Let's get ready to hustle. Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the Waking Up From Work podcast. Today, you're listening to episode 53 of the podcast, talking to someone that I wanted to bring on after speaking with online. Today, we're going to talk to Ryan Sullivan, also known as Sully Bop. He's a rapper and a DJ in New Jersey and also helps people build podcasts and has a background in marketing. So real mixed background. When we were talking online, we actually met on LinkedIn. We really were jiving on you know, business, brand building, and all these creatives and how gelled those two were together for us. And that was a little unique in the sense of the way that we were kind of talking was, was very similar to a lot of ways that I think. And uh, that's not to say that I don't jive with so many people, but I really felt like Ryan was understanding a lot of uh, ways I look at brand when it comes to music and audio and everything in that way. So this episode, really, really fast paced. Ryan and I are both really high energy. So we kind of like fed into each other really fast paced. We jump around a little bit, but we jump into a lot of really great topics. Another heads up is that the internet was absolute trash. And we got cut off from Zoom and Instagram Live maybe three or four times throughout the episode. So if there are any hiccups, I did spend a lot of time trying to edit them out. So just know that if they're there, I was really sad about it and I had to walk away and and just try to be a man. So uh, hope you enjoy the episode. Let me know what you think about it. Head on over to wakingupfromwork.com and hit us up. Enjoy. Tonight we have on Sully, aka Sully Bop, aka host of Bopcast. So for those of you that don't know Sully, he is a rapper, he is a DJ, he is someone that helps people build podcasts, which is cool, and he has a history in marketing. And Sully and I connected through LinkedIn on kind of like another thread on a bunch of podcast interviewers and interviewees. And he was saying a lot of different things that I just felt like, like I felt like there's a lot of things that I've got my hands in, in business. And I've also been in like all these, these, these bands in the past and work audio now. And I just felt like you and I could probably chat on pretty much anything for a long amount of time, no matter what we wanted to get our hands into. So I felt like he was the right guy to come hang with us tonight. Welcome, Sully. Thanks for being on, Thank man. you. Thank you, man. I appreciate both you guys. Um, and yeah, we connected on LinkedIn and kind of just took it from there. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Um, I'm Sully. I create podcasts for a living. I'm a rapper, producer, DJ, podcaster, but not in that order. Um, just depends on the day. Um, obviously, my DJing is at a little bit of a standstill right now. But uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to uh, get into this and see what we can uh, talk about. It's interesting. You've been working in bands. I'm actually working with a drummer right now. We've been obviously we can't um really collaborate the same way we did um you know a month ago but uh regardless of that man i'm just hyped to i'm excited to be here and see what we can uh, talk about hell yeah man do you want to like for people that aren't familiar with you do you want to kind of go through just however you want where you've been through in the past or or how you came to be doing what you're doing now because i know that you said that some things had switched up a lot and i even remember um, I think it was one of your rap EPs. It was like one of your titles was like, uh, what is it for me? It's like talking about the switch up. Like, oh yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, so there's I have a I had an album that I released in 2018. Uh, it's called Second Story, and uh, that's about like me living in the second story in my parents' garage and like writing this album up there. Um, and I had another EP or I had an, an EP after that called expect and maturity. And that one was kind of just about growing up. And that one was definitely really out there. I produced all the beats. I like tried to master them. I didn't know what I was doing. 
Um, but regardless of that, I guess I'll, I'll just take it back a little bit and then just kind of come to where I am now. Yeah. But, Hell yeah. Um, I started, I started just rent. I literally started working on cars when I was in high school. I always loved cars. Um, and just, you know, started working at a shop, uh, went to like a technical school while I was in high school for, for that and thought that was my calling. And it honestly was, I really, you know, I still love it, but, um, I, you know, worked at a shop like full time for three years. I went to community college at the same time, did that kind of college work grind. I was making music every night when I came home, me and my homies would just chill my, in my parents' garage. And I lived out there. Um, and we would just freestyle and make music every night. And I realized that, you know, the thing that you do at the end of the day and like the thing that you wake up thinking about is probably the thing that, you know, you're passionate about. So, um, obviously I still love cars, but I realized, you know, I, I, I think I can, do something with this music or with this audio. So during this time, I also started a podcast, which is Bobcast that you mentioned. And I started interviewing my friends. I started interviewing this kid I met at community college. He made like six figures on the stock market before he was like 21. So I was like, all right, I got to interview these guys because they're going to be crazy people later. Like they're already crazy now, but they're going to blow up later. They're going to be multimillionaires, successful people, whatever they might be. And I'm like, "I I love talking to people similar to, you know, obviously you guys do too. And that's, uh, you know, so I started there, had the podcast, had the music. Um, I was releasing music here and there, made an EP in 2017. That was my first EP on SoundCloud, like stole the beats from YouTube, the whole nine. Um, 2018 came out with the debut album. Wasn't really a debut album. Like you think as like an artist, especially as a rapper, you'd think if you release an album, it's like the debut album. And then like two years later, then you release the next debut album. It's like, how many are you going to do? Uh, but so I did that. It's like, how many debut albums can you have, man? Like, all right, this is it. Like, um, yeah, but so, right. you know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. The third debut, like this is going to be it. But, I just keep so, debuting. Uh, <laughs> what'd you say? Sorry, I missed it. I keep debuting. I keep just becoming a thing. It's yeah. constant, man. Yeah, it's constant. But yeah, so I did that. Um, so I was just kind of going through this evolution and, uh, you know, every day I started like meditating, I started getting into like mindfulness. I had always like been like a workout guy since I was like 15. So I was into like fitness, but I didn't do the mental fitness until I got into meditation. So, um, right. I've been watching like Joe Rogan for years and just like listening to these people who would always talk about it and like, didn't really know what it was. So started to practice myself and, uh, you know, I do it every morning now and it's really essential. So I kind of like started kind of building this life slowly, um, from what I had before, um, you know, and so going through the motions end up after community college, I make a decision. Okay. Am I gonna, you know, I've made music now. I have a laptop, I have logic, I'm making beats, but, um, you know, am I going to do this car thing? Am I going to start my own shop? I saved up enough money. I had a shop ready to go. I had two years worth of rent. I had like everything ready to go, like the resources, or am I going to take this money and go to college? And I ended up going to college. And when I came to college, I started, I said, all right, I, I did a mechanic job at college. I was like, all right, I don't want to do this anymore, man. I want to do, I want to do like audio. I want to do be, you know, I want to work from home. I want to be able to do that. So started freelancing, hooked up with a marketing agency to do a podcast. They ended up hiring me to do sales and marketing. And I was doing business development and it kind of like, you know, this crazy experience literally at like 21 years old, um, working for this company. And then I realized people started coming to me and asking me, hey, how do I start a podcast? What is a podcast? And I realized for myself, I think I can make a business out of this uh, out of this podcast thing. So, you know, long story short, I left the company. And, uh, you know, since then, it's only really been a few months of me building this podcast business. But, uh, you know, I, I think I'm at an advantage starting it during during this time. Some people think they're at a disadvantage, but um, I see it as an advantage. And uh, I have had no shortage of of, uh, you know, possible, you know, uh, or potential clients. So, um, that's kind of where I'm at now. I create podcasts still, I still go to college, I'm still finishing up there. Um, still making music, but, uh, but yeah, kind of, uh, the podcast is, uh, is my thing. I'm really passionate about it and, you know, it's crazy. I get to do that for a living now. So I love that. So there's a lot in there that we can yeah. get into, <laughs> but I, I, I want to just take right now. I, I like, <laughs> All right, really quick. I, we did like two episodes, like right when Corona, like actually did flip things like to, to be very different. We did an episode to address that. We just did a solo episode on like people getting digital. Like how do we take a small business and get digital because that's how they're getting income in. So I purposely took the last episode before this one to legit just talk to someone about how we got started in music and just like blow out not talking about this shit because I think that's important too. But 
I really want to hear what you have to say about your perspective on why you think right now is an advantage for you versus a disadvantage, because I agree with that. But I think a lot of people will hear that and they'll, they'll put arms up. And I think that they, they might need to hear what you have to say on that, because I think it's an important mindset to have right now, but with all the bad shit and all the negative, there are advantages right now. And there are amazing things happening right now. And, and, and there's things to take advantage of. So I want to hear what, what is it about right now? That's an advantage for that type of business that you're doing. I totally believe it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm biased because I have a digital business. So maybe, um, that's an aspect of it, but it's kind of like that post you recently put out of like, I'm just focusing on the things I can control. Um, I can control how much time I spend on LinkedIn and how many leads I try to pull in from that. Not even leads, man. I don't even call them leads. I just get on calls with people. I literally hit people up every day. People are home. They get their work done in the first four hours of the day because they're used to waking up at five or six in the morning and then they're just chilling on LinkedIn, man. So I'm just getting on calls. I'm talking to people. I'm not, I don't, I don't, none of the people that I even talked to, I did a hard sell on. Like, that's not even my thing. I, I really just talk to people. Hey, do you need my services? All right, great. Let's work together, you know? Um, but I have what I can control is that is putting myself out there, getting on free calls, giving people advice, creating podcasts, interviewing, getting interviewed, um, create music, like, um, you know, edit podcasts. These are all things that I can do. Um, so, but I, but I guess back to your question though, um, more specifically about the, you know, the time we're in right now, why I'm at an advantage, um, you know, because of that is because this is the time to create and people aren't listening 100%. to podcasts more right now. They're not, they're listening less. They're not going to the gym. They're not driving. They're bored in their house. So they watch Netflix and YouTube and TV. They're not listening yep. or watching podcasts as much. So this is the time to double down on creation. And that's what I do. That's my business. I create podcasts. So right now is an amazing time for me, um, specifically because of that. Um, I'm not really, you know, affected by, it. I do in-person interviews and I offer services in person too. But it's just not a big part of my business, so it's it really uh, sure. I can double down on on the digital. I love that. So I mean, like, so I like that you're fair to 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 put out, you know, your perspective of why it would be set up like that. Like, I think on one of the episodes I was saying before, where I was being like really forward with people to be like, "Hey, you need to change things." With you have days right now to change things to make them work because things have just fundamentally changed entirely. And you have days to get things digital as a digital offering. If you're a mom and pop or you're whatever, if you don't have some way to, to work around online, I think I said something like at the moment, financially, I'm safe. So maybe I wouldn't say that if I just got totally shit on like so many other people right now. And I'm, it's not like I'm doing amazing, but I'm just not, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to not be, I, I have work, right? And so I just put that out there to say, I'm saying these things from my perspective. I can't say the things from your perspective or a different person's perspective. I can exactly. only voice from my own perspective. So like for you to flat out say, just like you said, hey, I already had a straight up pretty much digital forward business. So I mean, I'm saying this from a perspective of already being in digital exactly. land where we're now yeah. entering a spot where digital is hot, hotter than it's ever been. Yep. So I, I'm saying yeah. this from that perspective, but... I do believe that, that that's why I wanted to break that down a little bit though, because I, I, I like what you said about, you know, there, there are shifts that have happened where now maybe someone's open for four hours in the afternoon where they couldn't, right? But there are people that are, are finally going to be able to get a, uh, interview in with me and we just never clicked before because I'd be working a day job and hustling at night or I'd be doing whatever sure. and it just would never line up to actually be able to have them as a guest, no matter how much we tried. And now it's possible because flexibility is coming in or people are at different times right now, or people are more open because they have less things in their way or less commute or whatever it is. So I like that dude. That's pretty interesting to see. I'm yeah, glad to I've hear that you're doing that good, too, man. I've worked both. I, like I said, I worked at the mom and pop. I was the only employee, man. Like, I've seen it. I've I've worked in so many small businesses. I've worked in large businesses. Same. Um, I've worked in digital. I've worked in not digital. I've worked in music studios. I've worked, you know, so it's just like, I know also what it's like to be a b business that can't even thrive on digital where you can't, where you can like create content and put it out. But like to actually, if you have a, a location and that's it, like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Get creative with your marketing. Like, that's what I would say. It, like, if you're, 
like I'm just going to go off real quick, but I had this idea the other day. If you're like a limo company, right? Like like sign up for Uber with your limos and go pick people up like in limos and stuff. Like do stuff like that. Like I don't know. Go out and or do deliver, stuff for deliver free shit. Or tri- you can fit a lot go of things deliver. inside a limo. <laughs> like exactly. it's not a go it's door not dash glorious, with a, like but... with a crazy like monster truck or something. I don't know, but like just get creative. Um and that's easy for me to say, you know, but <laughs> Yeah. What's up, Bri? What? Seriously, exactly. dude. So so like because I I I don't want to hang out in in that zone, but like what so between the different things dude because like i know that you're talking about like i i've done the rap djing working for auto working in marketing uh doing this podcasting thing that you're doing right now what are what are creating some of those shifts is it solely driven by like what you were saying where you're like hey what do i wake up to this you know do i wake up thinking about this and then you're shifting with what you have for what you just enjoy and you're following that or are you shifting because of market or different things in your life? Like what, what's moved you between the different spaces and how do they fold into each other? Because I know that like for me, I've got my hands in a bunch of different spots the same way. And it's like, it all drips into each other in one way. And then in the other way, there's just different pieces of me as a person. And I just enjoy those different pieces. So I do different things in those spaces, you know? Yeah, What's your perspective uh, on that? I don't know. A lot of the t- it's pretty difficult to like determine like why I just really um or like why I made the shifts. Um, I think it's just because each time I feel like I get a little closer. Um, and I try to follow happiness. Like somebody asked me the other day, like, "What's your definition of success?" I'm like, "Definitely happiness," because the most uh, the most happy the happiest um people that I know those are the people that I really follow and like take advice from because they figured something out. Um, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's easy, but like, it's easy to figure, it's easier to figure the money out than it is the happiness. Like you can just go and like work your life to get a really good high paying job. Like then you got the money figured out. But if you try to go get the happiness figured out, there's no, you know, there's, you can read 10,000 books on that and not, you know, still not figure it out. So I think like I have, I've followed the happiness for my shifts. Um, I still love, like I said, I still love cars. I kind of just get, got fed up with like you know, making money for somebody else and, you know, not getting paid enough. And, you know, in my opinion, um, and I always knew that I can just do something different or, or do something, um, you know, better. So I think it's also just that comfortability too. Like it's that, like the butterflies and like, I didn't want to quit my job to like start doing pot. Like I love the, the, the paycheck, man. I was so used to paychecks and then you go to your own business and then it's like, Whoa, I gotta, I gotta motivate myself to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, when there's no boss, like telling me to go or like, there's no time I have to be somewhere. Um, but I really like, I guess back to that, like I try to follow the happiness and go with like, with what's like uncomfortable because the comfortable is what you're doing right now. Or like what I was doing at the Autobot, like I could have just been the person that kept going and I probably would have been fine. Like I would have been able to support myself. I would have worked 40 hours a week, had my weekends, um, to still DJ, but, um, you know, I just, I, I, and people were like, how can you turn down even $300 a week of like just part-time work? And it's just, on, and it's digital, it's online. And I literally like, I turned down the job that kids go to school and graduate and do the internships to get. I literally, I quit, you know? So it's like, I had to, ch- I think it's really about happiness to be honest with you. Um, but it doesn't click for everybody like that. No, it doesn't. I mean, it's, it, it all depends on the type of person you are or what you want to to make sense of it. There's people that don't do well in an entrepreneur place that shouldn't go after that because of, you know, because of, because it seems like the right thing. If I might not even do well, bro. Like I'm only only been doing this for a little while. I've always had entrepreneurial tendencies and stuff, but like, I'm not like a success, you know, I mean, I'm doing it. It's like paying some bills and it's getting me by, but like these contracts aren't for 10 years, you know? So, um, but that's the unpredictability is people don't want the unpredictability. They don't want that at all. They want, they want to stay in place because that makes sense. You have security. You feel like when you go to bed at night, you're not like, like, um, one of my friends, he's an artist, his name's after Hill. And he had this song in it and he said, how am I supposed to sleep when I wake up broke? And it's like, Mm. like true. Like, how do you go to bed if like you run your own business and you're going to, and you don't have that one client that you need to make the bills for the month? Like you're going to stay up and do it. Whereas if you have a job, you can just go to sleep. 
and wake up and the job's there. You walk in, everybody's there because everybody else, they built it. You know, you didn't build it. You just signed up, you know, so. Yeah, right on. A little, little rant. <laughs> right. So, like, with, uh, like, how do these things dribble together? Oh, yeah, that's kind of a, yeah. I, uh, so, with the marketing, I was like, you know what? I didn't even, I kind of fell into it. Cause, but I had to market my music. But I don't know how cars relates to the music is going to come to fruition in like a year or two. Um, especially for this next album, it's going to make a lot of sense, but right. But I'm just putting the pieces together. Um, okay. you know, the podcast and the audio goes together. Um, the production oh, yeah. side of me, like creating an audio experience that goes with the music too. And creating an album, creating a podcast series is kind of like making an album just spread out over like 10 hours instead of one. Um, so that kind of connects. Um, yeah, but other, other than that, like fitness, health, mindset, um, you know, mental health, that kind of all came because I wanted to be the best version of myself all the time. I want to feel amazing all the time. Um, so I could do everything to the fullest. Like I don't work, t- you know, 14, 16 hours a day. I just try to maximize, you know, the time that I do have. Um, but that's the best way I could say how it all fits together. But honestly, I don't know, man, it's in time. Time is going to tell me how it fits. Like, no, that makes sense to me. Like for me, like I have a podcast, I have a band, I do recording, mixing, mastering for bands. And then I also have a day job right now because I haven't transitioned out. Right. So I have all these different pots and each one is a brand. Like every, the band has, you know, all of its logos and merch and website and stuff like that. You know, the, the audio has its website and blog and all that crap, you know, and just like you have like cars, like I love shooting guns. I love hiking and I love kayaking and remote camping and remote, like getting way out. Right. But I don't love that enough that I want to go be like a adventure facilitator or something like, like, I don't like it that much where like I wake up and have to do that. I do wake up and I have to think about recording and whatever, like it doesn't matter what I even do. I'm going to think about it somehow. I'm going to look at a Cheerio box and somehow going to remind me of like a condenser mic or something like it's, you know, so it's like all those things bleed into each other. Like you can, you can see, uh, you know, elements of it in, in everything that I would do, I would imagine. But at the same time, like they also fulfill different pieces of me. Whereas the, the podcast can be a little bit more businessy where I, you know, I've got an indie rock band. I'm not on there talking about like economics and like how to survive in business and bring in cash flow and, uh, create, you know, a living and things like that. I might be talking about, you know, like, I don't know, like a, a, a big party or like some, some easygoing thing on there. Maybe I'll talk about something serious, but it's just interesting to, it's interesting to, uh, to, to pick on, on brains of people that are doing these different things and just see you know, is this all one thing for you? Is it different pools and, and how it relates goal, to each uh, other to make the audio to the mixing and mastering, like to, you know, do that full time? Or is it kind of just like you do you like how the balance you're at right now? No, no, that's the goal is to do that full time. And, um, this year I am actually purchasing a property to start building a studio. That's not one. Like right now I freelance out of a studio and I pay to be in a place. And, uh, this year I, I will actually be getting a property to start building that location out. So, um, that's great, man. I just, and sometimes too. like, that's great. You have that job to like, as your anchor too. like, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Like economically, it really didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense until like, you're nobody until you're somebody, right? Like it doesn't make sense until it does. It doesn't make sense to make the podcast business until you got six clients at 2000 a month, you know, like then people are just like, Oh, okay. Like it's real. Like, how are you, how'd you do that? Then they start asking you how you did it. Right. But when you're like doing it, when you're just, when you're like trying it, um, I don't, I don't think like, obviously everybody on the internet is fake it, you know, till you make it type of dudes, like the clout chasers and everything. Um, and which I don't think is like, I don't even knock those guys. Right. But, um, I just like, you know, I see it differently. And I think like you're on the same page, man. Like you're just like, you know, you're going to have the studio. Right. So it's it's just like it's not it's just like a matter of time and like you have that you know back that like anchor as your like your day job and like but then you have the macro more macro goal of the studio which is now kind of a more of a micro goal because it's you know it's even closer but i like that you it's not like you didn't say one day i'm gonna have a studio you said oh i have this studio that i'm that i'm about to buy like you know so you 
you put it out there, it's going to happen, you know? Like, I just so, like that. Respect dude, that. Dude, it went through waves. Like, I, I have said since I was 16, I'm going to bring in my income from full-time from recording. I'm almost twice that, oh. right? I'm like, I'm, I'm heading towards thirties quick. So it's not like a, it hasn't taken me a long time to get here. And it took a lot of, uh, you know, working for free in a basement, um, and then hit college and, and working on weekends and then getting out of school and getting a day job that I hated and working that for three or four years of just trying oh, to get I feel income, you, bro. I will take $5 an hour before I work for somebody again. I feel like like myself, you know, like I'll make zero dollars, man, if I could just work for myself. Right. But like now it's, it's not, it's not a fuck around formula of how it's happening, dude. I have financial, I literally have an Excel sheet of exactly financial points that need to hit to be able to pay for that space to do, to do, um, to do actions. So it's like, it's, that's what puts me more at ease. And that's what puts me, uh, in that spot where you're say chasing happiness is it's not, um, it's not like a, a dream. It's, it's, I have lists of actions that are pushing me towards what it is that I want to do, even though it's taken me way longer than I wanted, you know? Exact. Yeah. And, uh, my bad. I was they don't even mention it. They don't even mention what's going on. <laughs> I just t- I talked to him for like an hour. We don't even, it doesn't even come up. So um. right on. Yeah. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got friends on this live feed that are, are, uh, are hurting, you know what I mean? So it's not like that, but, uh, so you have a podcast and I was checking out clips on it and checking out the, the podcast and you kind of do something similar too, where you interviewed a bunch of friends. It grew out from there. You're interviewing now lots of different creators and things like that. That's really what we do here as well. And, and I've benefited from it more than I can say to be able to talk to people like yourself and other people and all these different industries and different things that they're creating what are some of the things that you've taken away from, you know, some of the people that you've met through there or doing this podcast for yourself? Because I talk about that all the time. Yeah. First of all, podcasts are crazy and they're like nothing else. It's not like having a conversation. It's not like sitting down on a park bench with somebody. It's not even close. It's not just not the same thing. Um, And like I described it the other day um, to my friend about how it's literally a pod. Like I have headphones on, you have headphones on. We're in this. The outside world isn't isn't messing with us right now. Um, like we're just in here, we're in this zone. Right. And like you, you can tell when it gets cut off and you got to pick it back up, right? Like you got to get back in it. Um, you so feel it really, the energy. It, it's like a session, dude. You can feel it's like it's literally yeah, like a, it is like a session. It, it really is. Especially if you're in music, like you understand that kind of zone, that flow state, man, there's a flow state that happens. And so that like, first of all, there's that, which I didn't realize was a thing until I started interviewing people. Um, now I have an interface so I can have, so when we, when I do do it in person again, um, we'll have, we'll be able to really, you know, both lock in. Um, so, and so I love that aspect of it, but from interviewing people, I realize just there's, there's so many, there's so many different ways to, to go about this shit. Like there's, everything is so flexible. Like I interview my one friend, um, uh, my friend Jenna, for example, she, um, you know, races mini sprint cars and she like writes for a, a, a dirt racing magazine. Um, and then you have, you know, my guy, Dan Valente, who made all so much money on the stock market. And you got my guy, Nikush, who like hacked our like school iPads in junior year of high school and like got Pokemon for everybody. And now he's a software engineer. And then, you know, my other homie who like worked on farms for two years for free. And now he is, uh, you know, now he just goes and, you know, tries to, you know, uh, like protest for like veganism and stuff like then all these random people and the not really random people that I like, grew up with, but everybody has their own story right. to tell and everybody you can take, you can learn from everybody. So it really like, I feel like it, it's humbled me uh, for sure. And I didn't realize the power of interviewing and the power of just connecting with people and like you doing this, man, like it's like, you know, I commend you because a lot of people it's, it's, it's uh, I don't think it's that easy to just go on and talk by yourself, but it's definitely not the same. And to interview somebody, you have an obligation to them. Like if you have a guest on, like what I tell, like the podcast that I create um, and the, you know, the CEOs or, founders or marketers, whoever I create in a podcast for, you know, I tell them like, Hey, you got an obligation to this guest. I don't care if it's, 
you know, um, you know, the chief of staff for the, for, you know, Trump, or I don't care if it's your best friend or, you know, some right. random dude on the street, you got an obligation because now you had them on to, Hey, what did you tell them? You said, you're going to make clips. All right. Now you got to make the clips. You guys said like, Oh, uh, you know, I'll refer you to my friend and you got to refer him to your friends. So, um, you got an obligation to yourself then, and to your guest and to the audience. So it's like, it, it's a business basically is what I, you know, kind of think about it as, but then, you know, when it comes down to the conversation, man, uh, this stuff is like, it's like nothing else. Yeah, dude. I love what you just said about that. Like it, so on here we're, we're really casual. We I swear love it, man, like sailors. Way, it's really, it's dope. I really love it. Good vibe. You feeling it? Yeah. Oh, oh I'm good, feeling man. it heavy, bro. It feels like one of my podcasts, which is like, I connect. But once I saw your page and everything, I was like, this dude, he's the man. Like we got, oh. it. cause dude, it is, it's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to connect with people sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially I, I, I found it even more difficult to connect with people over podcasts sometimes because like you said you it's not just like a park bench conversation like you are going into it very much with the idea that it is something inside of your head and like sometimes things don't come off genuine or you feel rushed or you feel nervous or you want to feel like you want to answer the question right instead of answering it like fully honestly and you know like you said oh you know we got a good flow going now sometimes yeah. You know, it's hard to oh, make wow. I've had to reel some in, bro. I've been halfway through a podcast like, how am I going to save this? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. It's like it, it really forces you to like engage with engage people. on the spot and switch it up on the spot too, and steer the conversation, which in real life, if you can steer a conversation, you can right. set, you can sell anything. You can convince anybody of anything. You can educate people on anything. You can really dig deep into people too. When that you too. Can- so they'll, they'll, you got to ask the right questions. You ask the right questions, people open up to you instantly. Instantly. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah, I think like, but yeah, like what, what I was saying is that like I like it to be casual because I like, I think the conversations that I enjoy the most in my life are the conversations, honestly, when people are really, they're really either st- like really stressed or they're really excited or whenever they're feeling some type of potent emotion. And it's like the end of the day when they're tired, but they're still feeling that. And then you talk about it because they're getting, they have a pure emotion where they're feeling so much of some way on it that they're going to, they're going to jive on it, right? They're going to talk on it because they, they really have to, like they have to express it at that point. And when they're a little bit more tired, they've been doing it for all day. It's still very in their head. But now it's time to like get rid of the bullshit. If the, if they're the type of person that might have some bullshit, or they might have like anything that that prevents them from talking bluntly, or anything that has a hesitation for like how they're going to be judged about something. My favorite times when I see an artist in the studio, it's like in a studio I get close anyway. No matter what, when I work in the studio, I'm going to get real fucking close with that artist, no matter what, right? But the times when it pushes a project over the edge is when you've been working 14 hours, they've been working 14 hours, you 1 million percent give a shit about how your record as an audio engineer comes out to be reflected to all these people on Spotify and whatever. They 1 million percent give a shit about how their art, their baby is reflected. And you both get to that point where you're tired and you fucking have magic happen. And I also believe that in conversation too. When people get to that point, they're really passionate about something. They know that you're not looking for bullshit. They don't have the, the, they don't have the energy to give you a bullshit act. And then just pure, amazing conversation. Truth comes out. You link up heart to heart, have the conversation. And that's the way I love to podcast because I I think people put out their truth about how they did something about how something is or isn't working and things that really people can connect on. And with what you're saying, like taking it seriously, I absolutely agree with that too. It's like, it's, it's like even this is a casual one, right? Like I've got my bed with like some ridiculous cat I'm in my sheets closet, on it. Dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know Ryan's not even video. He's on yeah, his he phone did. In the basement, <laughs> hey, that's circumstance, dude. That's different. You know, you are forced. You know, we're still out here. But uh, even though it's like a casual conversation, it's like me and you both had it on our calendar that this is going to happen. We both looked into like a little bit of information on each other to make sure that we knew what the hell to say oh, to yeah. each other Let me touch on some and we know a certain amount of time that we right have now. 
let me touch on just forgetting this podcast last week, bro. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to not not going to not bring that up. Don't be don't do that. Like, don't do what I did and, for, and not put it on your calendar, which is the problem. It's just the worst excuse you can even ever give somebody. It wasn't on my calendar, dude. I can't. Sorry. Like, what the like? Come on, bro. That's not an excuse. Hey, dude, like, you're on. Like, I look back at myself. I'm like, damn, bro, you should have been on top of that and i was not so so listen yeah man it's but when it comes to the end of the day like i, I did f- i made four contracts today i don't know how to make a contract dude like yeah <laughs> like i was i've been grinding i had a class at 8 30 this morning and i did that and then i worked for the rest of the day and now it's 8 20 like so but i i agree with you man once you get like there's no both bull- no time for bullshit if you really put that work in you know um, there's none dude there's not you and you're right that. being in the studio too I, i'm so glad you touched on that because i've had i interned at a studio for free um that was another time in my life literally like almost a year ago when Hell yeah. I had, in jersey when i couldn't what'd you say where in jersey where yeah in jersey um in, right Booton, in Booton, new jersey it's called the vault studio um tyler cool. braddock uh he uh he owns it uh shout out to tyler this dude was like hey man if you want to come in and like check it out and just like sit in on the sessions you can and i was like let's do it and uh and so i did it for free literally like just had dj gigs on the weekend barely paying my bills just yep. sitting in the studio for free thinking like i'm not getting money right now but this is going to lead to something um and you know it did I-, I learned so much man i learned pro tools i learned how to make content in the studio um you know take pictures in the studio like how to work with artists how to talk to artists like what how to connect with them and I got the most knowledge, man. Like, it was crazy. Like, people always want to... I couldn't even afford working for free, but I did it anyway. And No shit. Just, I love that quote. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you got... Like, uh, you're going to figure it out. If you don't... If you really believe in it, like, this dude, I really believed in his business and what he was doing. And, like, there's things that I learned. And then I went in other studios. And then I, I saw it happen a different way. And I was like, oh, maybe, you know, I'm going to take notes on this, too. Um, But, yeah, like, I was... It, being in the studio from... 10 a.m. to like 10 p.m. and then when it gets to that like 10 30 o'clock you know p.m. session like and you've just been going you just and you're on your fourth song it's like a six hour session man that's like that's that's it's another type of person man the emotions come out and you I connect love it, dude. like you just you're, I you're love homies it. and you didn't know this guy yesterday you know so i can that, totally, that's what I makes totally a good it. record dude when you start bleeding and sweat and sweating then the record's gonna be awesome you can't just like straight up chill out like unless oh, you're dude that's a, like know, actually man. let's talk about that what is the how do you all right those guys in the studio that go in there they're so high they can't even rap they can't even sing whatever maybe i don't know if you've been i've been just around rappers but some singers too but so high they can't even rap they're sipping so now they're getting drunk and they're crossfaded and then they I've try to spit and out. they can't and i'm close to on the beat and I've then they're like what's out. happening can you fix it i've kicked him out i yeah. stopped sessions dude and like here's the thing right I'm a rocker. Like, I get it. I love drinking. I love hanging dude, out. Me, and, like, too. I drink bourbon when I do vocals, dude. Like, so it's not like it's not in the studio, but there is a difference between there's like, there's a, there's a, there's a delta and an even and a, and, a, and a spot that you have to hit where it's like you need to be, you need to be gra- like, you know, you need to be zen. You need to be relaxed. If you're doing like whatever type of record it is, you might need to get some alcohol and you like depending on who you are, you know there's different things to get you uh, in dude, that place. I like place. spitting. I like spitting off a couple a beer or two for sure. Yeah, drink. hell yeah, sure. me it too. It gets me loose, man. Yeah, but you can't just also go over the edge and then like get so much in the zone that it's a balance. Now you it's can't right. it's a you balance. can't perform. You know what I mean? There have been people where where they did exactly what you said and like when they got to that point, I was like, the session's over guys. And they're just like, well, what the fuck? Like what's going on? And I'm like, you aren't like, I don't know what it sounds like to you, but like you are tracking things that no matter what I do with my power, I cannot auto tune and, and a correct in terms of tempo and timing. There's nothing that I can do to get this content that you want. So like, we got to call it a night and it sucks to do that. And it feels shitty in the relationship. But at the end of the day, they wake up the next day sober ready to go and then they go you know and then if you can literally listen to it and you're like okay well that can't happen so i think it's like it's different with every person and it's like for for how much or how little they can do but it's always for me how do i set up the environment 
and set up the vibe that they need to create the art for it is. And it literally comes down to the record, dude. There are records that I track the whole thing in the dark. There are records that I sleep in the studio for the entire three day weekend. And I don't actually leave or go home because I get into like this weird spot. And I feel like, I don't know, like I, I have to stay there and not get on social or there's times where I'll, I'll, I'll switch out different, different ways, but everyone has a different flow state, a way to get there. And, For sure. and there, there has to be a, you know, an accommodation to be able to get there, but like you also need to be able to perform. Yeah. And, and not waste your time. That's the thing where it's like, that's a good engineer will, will do what you just said. Uh, will respect, like you respect your time. You're not just like running out the clock and just like, let these guys just like, nah, like I'm going to get an artist in who actually cares. Um, even though if I just blow the next two hours, even if I don't have a session in the next two hours, cause I had to cut you off short, you're, you're more about, you're, you're helping them whether they know it in the moment or not. Um, right. so yeah. And that's like, if you I look out so. for the artist, man, like you're, you're good. Like if you, if you do it for the artist, like you're, which like every good, obviously every solid engineer, um, <laughs> does, but yeah, some people just don't realize it or they just, they have this thing in their head about what it should be about like, oh, I am this type of person that goes in the studio like this and records like this. And like my homies are here and we're all just chilling. Like this isn't a chill fucking session, dude. Like I don't bring, I bring my producer or my engineer in the studio. I don't bring my friends. I'm not bringing my, they don't care. They have things to do, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm just like, I, I guess it's, you know, I see it differently, but, uh, you know, I bring music homies in, but they just sit I brought, there and uh, watch. Like, I brought people if we're going to do like group vocals or something, because that's been really cool. If we're like oh, doing like game that. vocal yeah, yeah. session and you bring in, you're like, all right, dude, bring your top 12 fans in here and they're going to be your gang vocals. Dude, those fans will never fucking walk away from your band if they're literally on your record done dude dude I, that's like, it too super I, fans mm-hmm. bringing them in I've, I've brought them onto my records they dude it feels amazing if you're not even a, you're say you're not even a musician and you literally get to go into a pro recording studio and go track something and be on a record i would fangirl all day for an artist that i love to be i'm, so, like, there's a, I'm random an artist things like that. doing that for somebody else bro like yeah like, hell yeah doing, dude like, i'll fangirl the, all day on it exactly there was like the, this jamaican guy his name's jaja neil and he's crazy, man. He's got a crazy voice. And he just asked me to do a little, like, as if I was, like, a radio announcer, like, in the beginning um, of his song. And, like, I was just yeah. in the studio. I record all the time. But, like, even that, like, I was just excited to do that, to be on his record. Like, Hell yeah. Oh, that's yeah, when it, That's when the people with the passion, man, if you bring people with passion in, they, they if they're passionate about what you're doing, like, they will, you know, be the first ones to be excited about, about that, you know. But, like, then you bring people in who don't, who are just, like, your homies, like. Bro, they're just here because you because they got nothing else to do. <laughs> so have you ever have you ever had uh, I don't know if you've had the situation or not where you have like a, a band girlfriend or band uh, band boyfriend or band wife or anything where like they're around in the studio or around during a practice or something and they realize how much they hate it. Like it seems cool at first and then they're like, oh, this actually sucks now that I'm here every week or something. You ever run into that? A little bit. Yeah. Like there's a couple of people that definitely were just that like. I don't even know why they were there. Like they seemed like they were like annoyed. By, <laughs> like that's what I'm Dude, saying. It's... Like bringing like whoever. It might not be your friends. It could be your girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> like um, I don't know. I don't think like my girlfriend is like amazingly, you know, extremely passionate about watching me record on a microphone. You know, for like, hours. For yeah, hours. Like, she loves me, but <laughs> yeah, for hours. But yeah, it's not. It's the glorification, man. It's not. It's not that cool. Like it's not that cool. Like, it's just, it's like work. It's literally work. <laughs> like I'm recording 10 podcasts. It's not like I'm like having the time. I'm, like, like, I'm sitting there oh. recording <laughs> intros and outros and, and, and doing all the editing, the mixing, the master. Like it's all You're in like, the damn, work. I'm right? tired, but, dude. But then they see the picture or the video of you in the studio and they think that's really dope. But they don't right. see all that back end. What happened in the background. And, right, like, dude. When they realize the back end. Documenting the journey too, then. Cause if you document it, like, that's why I'm like, damn, I'm just trying to get to the point where I can have a video guy follow me around. <laughs> like, I'm trying to document. I, I don't care about the finished product. Like, see the story, bro. Like, I love that. There's like your difference between producers and consumers, too. One of my friends, Drew, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a comedian, and he talks about how, especially in the podcast space, where you talk about people who are like, their interest is in all of these things, or their interest is in comedy, or their interest is in 
um, like, like podcasting and stuff like that. But they, they consume things like, oh, I watch this one. I listen to that one. I listen to this. It's just like, oh, well, how's, how's your one going? And it's like, oh, well, you know, I haven't really like done anything too much. And it. it's just like that difference between somebody who is it's like, yeah, you know, you see that shiny finished product that, uh, that has come out. And that's awesome because you can put your hands on that and you can listen to that. So you just did a post on that, dude. You just did a post on like, don't be, or I think, what were you saying on it? Like on Instagram, you're like being the, the producer of something versus the consumer. And you're like, I just said, be the, I just be the producer right and the now consumer. You're consuming both. my content and instead you could produce content and be the person like now, we, like it, it was like basically to say like, you're watching my video right now, turn it off. Go watch like after this goes to like, this ties into like Gary. I don't know if you follow Gary V. Love him. Um, I haven't been, yeah. I haven't been lately. I, I, I realized with him that there was a portion of my life I had to just suck everything that he had in and I took it in and it did amazing changes for me. Now I love him to death and respect the shit out of him. But now I have to pick pieces of him right now in my life is how I've seen it. He gives me like little juice and little, um, yeah. um, little moments right now. But I used to be at a point where I listened every day to every piece of content. And then I was like, all right, now like I need to get away from there. But I still love, I love him, dude. Huge advocate for that man. And I watched for like the last six years. I watched Daily V when it just started, like this third, like the third or fourth episode. Um, I've been following him for so long. He's from Jersey. He's from like Huntington County, New Jersey, where I'm from, basically same county. Um, And I was like, damn, this dude's crazy. And uh, yeah, I watched him. My my audience too, like my fans, like they would they would see me how like I posted him all the time, and then I met him in person. And Whoa. I met him and then I asked him a question and then he posted my question on his Instagram. And wow. after that, I went, I was like, whoa, whoa. Like then I took a step back and I was like, Gary Vee is not what I think he is. Like he is not, he doesn't have to do this. This isn't like, it's him for sure. But I realized the angle of it. And just what and like what he's doing for people. And it took me to meet him, to be posted, to watch him for six years, to not watch his content anymore. Because mm. if I stop to watch his content for three minutes, like I should just go and take that three minutes to go edit that podcast or go add somebody on LinkedIn. And right. that's what he wants you to do. That's what I realized. That's why he says the same things over and over again, you know. Um, and to to what you said, he's amazing, dude. Imagine how many people he's inspired to start businesses. Me, oh, me dude. too. Um, but I don't, I don't watch him anymore. I still follow him. Like I still see this stuff. But the, it's funny. The people that like every single one of his posts are not the people that are creating content at all, really. Um, and I realized, oh, yo, Sully, you got to just go create the goddamn content, bro. Stop right. watching these videos. <laughs> so I feel you, bro. I watch him every day too. Um, huge. I wouldn't be where I'm at without him, to be honest with you. Yeah, man, he's a uh, he's huge uh, inspiration. But uh, but really, if uh, I go on his live streams now and like I just type, hey, get to work <laughs> and I just leave. What on uh, what to Gary? No, like, like to people watching it, like oh, I type Sam in the comments Huey? like, yo, hey, go get to work. Like, stop watching this live stream. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> man exactly and like that's what he really he, that's what he's saying that's what he's telling you to do he's literally you're watching a video of him telling you to go to work but you're watching a video Can you right? imagine being so successful that you just like you get on at 11 o'clock and you're like you go away um yeah. and then you shut your live stream off and you're like nice dude i just crushed it. people watching like, instagram people watching that, instagram like, right damn. now know that i'm not that successful so, so stay on here no i'm just kidding yeah <laughs> no but dude his job is so hard that job imagine if you have to just tell people every day to get to work and every day people just complain to you how they don't have enough and they don't have enough places to go and they don't have enough opportunity and this happened to them and that happened to them. like that's imagine what, that's every why he gets day, pissed, you're dude. a multi like billionaire basically and people are telling you all of their little problems that like like you already made it right and then you're just giving back like his once I realized how hard um, his job was, I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> that, All right, yeah. I, so, I don't know why I literally unplugged it. Like, so don't think too hard on him. Just answer however you do on the moment. I just ask them in like whatever's on the top of your head. Don't don't think too hard on him. Okay. So first question um, is, what is kind of the the not the biggest mistake, but what is the thing that you would say is is kind of the hardest or the biggest thing 
along your way that you would say if other people could just like suck in the lesson somehow without without experience it you would you'd say is like your biggest mistake or your biggest pitfall along the way here you'd say hey here's a warning to you people don't do this thing what would you say really generic but consistency consistency you know yeah because and I've been asked this on podcast before and I was going to change it and say something else, but I really don't want to because I want to hone in on it. And any, you want consistency. anybody's going to tell you, man, to any, every article you read, like, how do I blow up on LinkedIn? How do I blow up on Instagram? How do I consistency? I didn't, I, I would upload three podcasts, do it for a few months, then stop, then come back, then stop, then come back, then stop. You can't grow like that. It doesn't work. So consistency, no, like number one, and then balance. Like you can't have the consistency without the balance, but. If I'm going to do one thing, it's going to be consistency for sure. That's what I messed up on the most. So I do too many things. I love that, dude. That's me as well. I fall in that same same spot, right? Wear yourself yeah. thin when you're being consistent. If you don't take care of the other portion of it, you don't take care of your head, your body, everything else, then you're going to fall apart in the consistency. Then you're not doing what you want to do. Then your mind falls apart because now you're pissed about not doing the thing you want to do. And it's a thing, man. It's a balance. All right, so flip side, okay. What is this doing? Meeting will end in 10 minutes, okay. Flip side, okay. what is the best thing that's come along the way for you? Best idea? Best, best thing best that you've idea, done? Best idea, like kind of off of that last question, like something like the thing I do that like helps me the most or? Best thing that you've, uh, best thing that you've done? Like accomplishments wise, or are you talking like? The best thing I do for myself. I'm just gonna say a couple then. Um, meditation. Um, yeah, uh, for sure meditation. I don't know. It's some days it's hard to tell how much it helps, but some days it's so obvious how much it helps. And I did it. For, I started doing it for 30 minutes a day for 30 days at 6:30 in the morning. Um, then I started doing it for like 20, and then 10, and then I stopped, and then I came back. And now I'm on a strict six days a week. Um, I can take one day off. Um, but meditation is huge for sure. Um, and then, uh, you know, and that ties in with the consistency cause I can't tell you meditation without morning routine and it doesn't have to be a morning routine. It could be a night routine, but, um, for sure. Best thing I've done for myself is, is morning routine and, and meditations in there. I love that too. Uh, what's like one resource that you'd recommend to the, our audience? It could be a book, could be video, could be website blog podcast like what's one thing based off of what you know you kind of know our crews about what would you recommend that they go check out that they might not have seen yet uh the war of art by stephen pressfield is my favorite book and it will it doesn't matter if you're a creator or an artist or not it will kick you in the balls okay it will mm. show you where it will help you overcome resistance but it'll also show you where your resistance lies because that's what kills us is resistance not everybody a lot of times like you know there's you can come up with so many excuses why you don't want to do something um and it's all resistance that's what it comes down to like something is pulling you away from what you actually have to do so the war of the war, art the war war of art it's obviously it's like a play on the art of war it's the war of art by stephen pressfield wow i don't think that Best someone's book. mentioned that yet i don't think that people have mentioned it yet yeah Sick. i can't i can't recommend i buy it for people like dm me i'll just send it to your house my God. All right. So I will include that anyone like driving or walking a dog or something that will be in the show notes, waking up from work.com slash show notes to go just click a link and head over to it without having to Google some shit on your phone and drive. So, um, where am I at? So three, where can people find you at? Yeah. Got you. So um, I'm going to do my thing right now. Um, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, even the ones nobody uses, those weird ones, like what? who uses the weird ones? But hey, we're on there too. Um, that's Bobcast at Bobcast Pod on Instagram, at Sully Bop on Instagram, um, Bobcast on Facebook, Sully Bop on Twitter, Sully Bop on YouTube, and uh, or just Google it and it'll come up there too. Hell yeah. All right. Once again, those links also will be in our show notes too. If you want to go check out what Sully's up to. Oh, last question. It's usually what I ask first, but I F that up in order is what made you pursue 
what you're after or like this creative life? What, what made it so that you had to do this? Why is this the thing that you woke up in the morning still thinking about? Why is this the thing that you have to do? Why, why this over anything else? Why this over going to be the auto mechanic and, and working at that shop? Why does this have to happen? Why is this you? Because we're built to do, we are not built, we're actually raised and brought up to not, to not pursue the things we want to pursue. We're supposed to pursue what's practical in the moment, and we're supposed to be set up, we're supposed to know. So, high, like, middle school prepares you for high school, high school prepares you for college, college prepares you for job, mm. job prepares you for retirement, I don't know, I don't like that. Um, model. I think it's really stupid. I don't I think either. Nobody is telling us that you can actually create a life that's different. And uh, I'm not saying that I did that, but I'm, I think I'm on track to. Um, but that's probably, I think that's really the, the why, why I'm doing it too. I'm also doing it for the people that just won't do it um, because somebody has to, <laughs> you know, like live like this, you know. Um, and I want to convince them that it's possible <laughs> um, and to not get just stuck in the monotony of things like you were said you were working that job you hated like shit man i've been there too and i don't want to do that i just got like i will go i'll have zero dollars like 10 times in my life as many times as i have to you know to continue like pursuing my passions damn dude what a way to cap this out man yeah. all right dude with zoom slowly counting down it's mm-hmm. screaming voice at me of going to charge me more for out of hatred for me. Um, I want to thank you for being on the waking up from work podcast. Sully, seriously, man, this is like a riot guys. Thank you so much. This episode was so good, man. This was so good. I had a really great time. You guys are great interviewers. Like you get, you know what you're talking about. We touched on so many different things, like everything that I'm passionate about too. Um, and I'm, you know, definitely down to have you guys on Bobcast too, obviously. Um, I got like, um, you know, and I'm always looking for guests on that too. So, but thank you so much. I, I, this was great guys. Was oh great. yeah, man. We'd love to dude. Nothing but good energy. All right, guys, that's going to end episode 53 tonight. Really hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you want to check out any of the links that Ryan put out there, don't take any notes on your hand or on the table or something like that. Head on over to waking up from slash show notes. I've got all those out for you, like the book that he recommended, any of his links, if you want to check out where he's at. If you want to let me know how you're doing or just chat with me at all, at Dave Wake Up on Instagram or Twitter. I'm pretty active on those. I'm on TikTok too. Um, I'm a little slow on there, but definitely feel free to hit me up. Would love to know what your takeaway from this episode is. What brand pieces make up everything that you do or what different entities or different pieces of you make up the total package? Would love to know. You know, we were talking about our bands or rapping or he's talking about cars. I'm talking about studio life, talking about, you know, podcasting. There's all these different pieces that make us up that make one total brand, which is you. And I'd love to hear some of the things that are from some of you guys out there. So definitely hit us up. Next week is going to be episode 54. Super short, sweet episode again, really quick for your day, maybe 20, 30 minutes max. That is going to be about doing shit for free. Cheers. Cheers.